Good morning. Uh, yeah, so I am live. I'm here in my studio. So I thought I'd do a, a basic 101 church sound system, like how to get started, super basic level um, of church sound systems. So we're going to talk through um, an audio system, an audio chain. Um, how do we start to build things together? What are the basic building blocks of a sound system? Um, and how do they all work and how do they all connect together? And when we do that, we're going to start with one of these. Okay, we're going to start, start an audio system with a, an input device, a microphone. Um, there are a few ways that we can get sound into a sound system. And when we talk about sound system, um, I'm talking about a connective, uh, sorry, a connected bunch of equipment, bun bits of equipment all connected together. So it's, it's, a, it's a system because it's lots of things all connected together to make it all work as one. So we start with an input device and that connects into something else and that connects into something else and that connects into something else and we work our way down the chain um, until the sound comes out of some speakers or something like that. Okay, so we're going to start with a microphone. Um, there are other types of input devices that you can have. Um, in fact, I've got one of them over there. Let me see if I can go and grab that. Without, I'm also wired into some in-ears so I can hear what's going out on the stream. So I need to not pull me in-ears out. There we go. Oh, I've just dropped a mic on the floor as well. So we've got two input devices. Um, so you will have in your churches, almost certainly all your churches are going to be using both of these two things. You're going to have microphones and you're going to have DI boxes. And they're both ways of getting sound into your sound system. So microphones, I'm sure most people are going to be fairly familiar with a microphone. Um, a microphone is going to give you the ability to be able to bring sound in um, for singers and preachers and whoever's going to be using one of these. I'm sure you've all seen a microphone. Uh, you've probably all held a microphone. You've possibly even spoken into a microphone. Um, they come in various different shapes and sizes. This one is a wired one, means it's got a wire attached to it. You will also find that some of them are wireless. You will have radio microphones that don't have wires plugged directly into them. Um, you will also find that some of them are like this one. This is a lapel clip-on, so a very small little mini microphone. You might have headset microphones. Um, and as I say, you'll have wireless handheld microphones. So it will look a bit like that without the wire coming out the end of it. And all of these are uh, various different types of microphones. And they all do different, slightly different jobs. They're all designed for slightly different things. Um, but essentially they're all going to do the same thing and that is convert sound waves into a signal that we can then do something with. We can send it through a mixing desk, we can start to process it and, and do something with that sound. And the way that we generally connect up a, a microphone is, let will switch over to this, with one of these connectors. Now, I don't know whether I can... I think that's slightly better. So this is what's called an XLR connector. An XLR connector is a um, very common connector that you find on a PA system. As I say, you use it in things like microphones. Um, it's got a few little features to it. So they have a lock and there'll be a little button somewhere that you have to press to release them. They also have um, a male end and a female end. And you don't need to worry too much about that for the time being. But what that means is um, it's actually fairly hard to plug in an XLR the wrong way round. So they will always have one end that is supposed to fit into the device that you're using. So if you want to plug a microphone in, there is only one end that will connect into that. The other end of the cable physically will not fit. So if you find two ends of a cable that don't connect together, it probably means either you've got the wrong end of the cable or you're trying to plug it into something that it isn't supposed to be plugged into. For instance, if I wanted to try and plug together a DI box and a microphone, you will find that those connectors physically will not fit. They are exactly the same connector. And if I switch back to this camera, you might be able to see this exactly the same type of connector. So that's what we call the male XLR. 
That one is the female XLR. Hopefully you can see that they are just slightly different connectors. This one's got pins. This one's got sockets. The pins go into the sockets. The pins will not go into the pins. So if you try to connect a male to a male, it physically won't fit, which is quite nice because it means that you can't really get it wrong. If it's designed to connect together, it will connect together. And if it's designed not to connect together, it physically won't connect together. So as a beginner, it's a fairly easy way to start. So if your cable will physically fit into your microphone, then it probably is an input cable and you've probably got the right one and it's probably gonna work. So you plug your microphone in. The DI box does exactly the same thing. You plug that into there. But a DI box also has another connector on the other end, and this is for connecting an instrument. So if you've got a guitar or a keyboard or a bass or anything like that, you would plug your jack cable from the instrument into the other side of this, and that allows you to bring a, an instrument into your PA system. DI boxes for instruments, microphones for singers and speakers. Generally, that's the rule. From there, that XLR cable will run back to normally some kind of a stage box and um, the connections on a stage we generally call a stage box and you will have different types of connectors. There might be one central place that all the cables go back to one connection box uh, or sometimes you might have multiple little connection boxes all around the stage. You can have little stage boxes dotted around the stage and you plug into um, different ones. So the drums will plug into one box, a guitar will plug into a different box, keyboards will plug into a different box, and they can all have their own little connection boxes around the stage. doesn't matter which way around you do it. They're all going to be stage box connections and you plug into whichever one you need to plug into that's normally the closest one to where you are. Those stage boxes then are going to run back to your mixing desk. And a mixing desk is probably going to look something like this. So this here is a mixing desk. Now this one is a, a mixer called the Allen & Heath SQ5 console, but there are um, various different makes and models of stage boxes, uh, sorry, of mixing desks. And digital mixing desks, broadly speaking, are all going to look fairly similar. You're all going to have a number of faders at the bottom that you can slide up and down that make things louder and quieter. They'll have a number of buttons here in the middle. Um, different mixing desks will have slightly different buttons, but they'll have a row of buttons in there that you can use to... Uh, do different things with and then they're generally going to have some kind of a screen in the middle of them That's the digital mixing desks will probably have Some kind of a screen section up here that you can look at that will tell you some information on them now If your mixing desk doesn't have a screen on it Then it's probably an analog mixing desk and analog mixing desks are still okay um, you, you find them from time to time. They're, they're less common these days. It's generally a slightly older thing. Um, so you, back, in the, you, back in the olden days, uh, we used to use analog audio all the time. Analog mixing desks were very, very common. These days, they're much less common. And these days, you're more likely to see a digital mixing desk than you are an analog desk. Most of the time, most churches have moved away from analog to digital now. Um, and it's fairly rare to come across an analog desk. So th often the easiest way to tell whether you've got a digital or an analog desk is to say, does it have a screen on it? If it's got a screen on it, then it's probably digital. If it doesn't have a screen on it, then it's probably analog. Um, and if you're not sure, then ask somebody. But uh, that's normally the distinction between the two. But whether it's analog or digital, they're going to be doing the same thing. Um, and a mixing desk is bringing all of your inputs in and it allows you to mix those inputs which just means kind of combine them together and you can combine them at different levels so you can have some things louder and some things quieter combine them together and then you're going to send them somewhere the mixing desk is going to bring some inputs in and it's going to send them out somewhere else 
Um, so it's going to do some what we call processing. It's going to bring things in, process them, and then send them back out again. And that's what a mixing desk does. Now the main thing a mixing desk does is it's going to bring all your microphones and instruments and things in and then send them out to your speakers so that people can hear them. And in order to get audio from a microphone through the XLR into your stage box, into your mixer, and then out to your speakers, you're going to need to send it to a thing called an amplifier. And depending on your system, you might have a big black box somewhere that's got some amplifiers in it, and you might have what we call external amplifiers or um, rack-mounted amplifiers, that often refers to them with different, different terminology, but there'll be a box somewhere you need to make sure you've got that turned on for the sound to get to the speakers. They'll, they will need to be powered. Um, if you haven't got those, then your amplifiers will probably be built into the speakers themselves. And sometimes you have speakers with a built-in amplifier. We call them active speakers. And in that case, you need to make sure your speakers are turned on. But those, those amplifiers, whether they're in the speakers or out of the speakers, will need to be turned on. They need power to make them work. So find out where your amplifiers are, find out how to turn them on, because if you can't do that, you won't get any sound to come to your speakers. So you might need to ask somebody in your church how you do that, where they are, how you turn them on. Um, once you've figured that out, at that point, you should be able to get some sound out of your speakers. You should be able to take a microphone, plug it into an XLR, connect that to a stage box, connect that to your mixing desk and then as you push that fader up that sound should get louder in those speakers and if you pull that fader down the sound will get quieter in the speakers. Now as well as um, sending sound to speakers mixing desks generally will have multiple outputs on them so you can send audio to lots of different places. So you can take audio um, send it to your speakers. You could also take audio and send it to your live stream, as we've already said. Um, another thing that we're going to look at a bit more later on is sending it to in-ear monitors. I'm wearing some in-ear monitors today. Um, in-ear monitors is a way for you to be able to listen to, um, so normally the band, to listen to what they're doing. So they can listen to the singers and the guitars and keyboards and whatever else they've got going on. Um, and they can make sure they stay in time with each other, make sure that everybody's in sync with each other. In-ear monitors is a great way to be able to monitor sound, to listen to sound. Monitoring just means listening to, keeping a track of. So I am monitoring the live stream right now so I can hear what's going out to the live stream. Um, but you can monitor any number of things. You could monitor band monitors so you can listen to what the band are listening to. Um, other things that you might send sound out to, you could send sound out to an induction loop for people using hearing aids. You could send sound out to like a, a crash room or a kid's room, so somewhere where the kids can go and the parents can listen to what's going on in the service. There's a number of things that we can send out of a mixing desk. Um, and audio can go to a number of different places from our mixing desk. There are options of different types of microphones. Um, we have various different types of microphones and depending on, as I said at the beginning, depending on which ones you've got, you might need to talk to somebody in your church who can tell you what microphones you use for what jobs. There are lots of options and it's not really very easy for me to say to you, you will have one of these that will do this job. There are so many different options that it's kind of difficult. So make sure you talk to somebody in your church who knows what microphones you use for what purpose. Um, as I say, you might need to check out whether you're using a digital or an analog mixing desk. There are two different types of mixing desks. And they do work slightly differently. Although they're bringing audio in and then sending it out somewhere, they do that in a slightly different way. So you need to figure that out as well. So you might need to talk to somebody in your church about that and to work out what type of mixing desk you've got and um, what you need to know to be able to use that. Beyond that, at that point, um, 
you should be starting to get a bit of a feel for your sound system. So you, you know now that you've got inputs coming in at the beginning, they're connected to stage boxes, that's connected to a mixing desk, that's going to be connected to amplifiers and speakers, but it's also going to be connected to maybe a live stream, maybe an induction loop, maybe band monitors, all those kind of things are all going to be coming off your mixing desk. Um, and that really is the, the essence of a sound system, that is what the basic level of your sound system is going to be doing. Um, now we are going to be doing a session later on on specifically how to use the SQ5 console and so I'll talk you through a bit more detail of some of the controls in there. So if you want to know a bit more about how to use a mixing desk and what some of the controls are and how they work, stick around later on. We'll deep dive into that a lot more and look at a lot more of that but um, for now that is the essence of a mixing desk that's the bare bones of how it all fits together um, so hopefully that's been helpful um, if you've got any questions as I've said chuck them in the comments I'd love to know what what questions you've got and uh, whether there's anything I can answer for you but yeah hopefully that was a very brief introduction into sound systems